Hello and welcome back. Hope uh, you had a great lunch. Hope you had a great networking session. Uh, hope you mingled around uh, with the exhibitors. Uh, right now, we're going to get right into the next next session. So we have next to us, uh, we have uh, Job Blom. He's the gro global product owner of uh, One Pipeline in ING Group. So uh, One Pipeline is uh, the global CI/CD solution for, uh, for ING. And he's a member of the global engineering tribe that provides IT for IT solutions uh, to, uh, to ING engineers globally, so worldwide. Uh, the one pipeline objective is to provide uh, a unified uh, experience, an integrated and compliant journey for all the engineers in, in the group. So um, uh, this is the, the active project uh, he's involved in. Uh, before joining ING though, he worked as a management consultant for Accenture and um, PwC. Uh, delivering IT transformation within uh, financial services all across uh, Europe. So uh, to be sharing it with us how uh, DevOps is DevOps is in the context of a bank, and uh, who showcased the journey of the CI/CD, uh, the yeah the journey of CI/CD in uh, in ING from start to finish with uh, with lessons and uh, with uh, with arguments to uh, to evolve towards cloud. Job, you have the you have the stage. Uh, thank you for the introduction. I, I couldn't have done it better myself. Um, I will. Uh, 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 good. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, I will share my uh, my screen and uh, share my slides. Um, so, um, yeah, my name is Joe Blom. I'm indeed the uh, global product owner for the One Pipeline, so our CI/CD uh, pipeline within the ING Group. And sharing the, the story, uh, our journey. Um, and if you look at our journey, um, I would like to start with ING as a whole, because I think that your CI CD journey is affected by the context you're in. And our context, context is accordingly. So we are present in 40 countries meaning also engineers across the globe from Americas to Australia and everything in between. Uh, we serve about 38 million customers, uh, mainly through uh, our mobile channel. Um, we offer retail and wholesale banking services, uh, meaning that we have a lot of services, meaning also that we have approximately every technology out there. And we have around uh, 56,000 uh, uh, 56, uh, employees, of which there are about 10,000 engineers across the globe. Uh, so that sets our context. And although our former CEO said, yeah, we're actually uh, an IT company uh, uh, with a banking license, that banking license also has impact on our context. Uh, we need to comply to all the regulators in each of the countries, we need to comply to uh, ECB, and that also impacts our CI/CD journey, which I will explain now. So, if you look at our DevOps journey at a glance, you can uh, basically uh, differentiate four stages. Um, it started with our front runners, our pioneers, that started to expert. Uh, um, um, check with uh, new concepts uh, back in 2009. Um, so those front runners started to experiment, started to use it, and they, they found it, hey, this makes my life easier. This makes my engineering journey faster. And the next step was that, hey, the clustering, because what they also saw is that, hey, if my neighbor is using .NET and I'm using .NET and we both use a different TFS pipeline, why cannot, why can we not combine that? So we basically did a clustering uh, in, in our main technologies, which is uh, Linux, uh, Windows, .NET, and we had a pipeline for vendor applications. And then we still had uh, uh, local uh, solutions um, because we still have, like I said, we also have engineers in Australia. And you cannot ask them to work on Dutch systems and to uh, uh, work with uh, gigabyte artifacts 
uh, from a dust with a, a, a small landline. So uh, we only centralized three pipelines. Then we also understood uh, in, let's say, 2018, 2019, that we could converge those. Because where technology doesn't drive your, your journey, the journey is more or less the same for, for each technology. You do your coding, you do your you build your artifact, uh, you deploy it, you test it, you release it. That cycle is more or less the same. So we converged it. So our uh, vendor application pipeline uh, was merged with a Linux pipeline. And for uh, both Linux and Windows, we did the same release orchestrator. While we still had the local solutions in place, uh, like our colleagues from Australia, uh, but also sometimes we struggle with legal restrictions like our colleagues in Turkey. Um, but then uh, the final phase and where we're currently in um, was that back in 2008, we had a look at our existing solution. We went through this whole entire journey uh, by ourselves, um, having tools installed on-prem. And then we noticed that, hey, we do a lot of lifecycle management. Uh, did patching the upgrades, which gives us a low ability to change. And how, how can we keep up in the future with all the new technologies? Um, so we also uh, uh, struggle to keep up with rules and regulations. Um, we are a bank and we basically need to evidence each and every change into production uh, so what was the original idea on that change? Who did the approvals, etc. But we could not do that with a set of tools. Thirdly, we also saw that we had a lot of impositions in our uh, uh, journey. So uh, with impositions, uh, I mean manual toll gates, managers that still had to prove, yes, you indeed for this change uh, uh, registered a change in the correct system. Or yes, you did indeed do policy A, B, C, D. But that's only an imposition. And from a manager perspective, he, she would just trust the team with it. And you don't need that many old tailgates if the information is actually already in your pipeline. So we had a strategic review back in 20, uh, 2018 to see what's next. How can we provide a better service? In order to do that, um, we started to realize that it's not about the tools. So we were an organization, a tribe, so the, our IT for IT tribe is, is 130 engineers uh, large. And we were providing tools. But we realized, hey, but that's not a competitive advantage. Anybody can provide tools. Uh, you can be a bank or you can be a brewery, doesn't matter. So we thought, okay, what we should provide is a uh, an engineering journey that's globally available, that adheres to the, uh, that's compliant, so adheres to all the regulators that we have, and that's integrated. And that was a starting point to think further. And we started with this vision, we started to, to think about, okay, what are our principles? Okay, we wrote down six. We said, everything we want to introduce, it needs to be designed for coexistence. Um, furthermore, uh, we introduced the concept of one for a commodity. So there should be only one in case the offering is a commodity. And for example, um, if I look at our engineering community, um, something like a code repository is just a commodity and can be one. However, uh, for test tooling, uh, that should be uh, up to the, that's really in the context of the squads itself. So then you cannot apply that concept of one as an example. Thirdly, we want to have everything as code uh, because it's it's repeatable, it's transferable, 
um, we can extract also our compliance work from that and it will uh, um, and it's also uh, uh, it can be version controlled and that's way better than having a UI uh, uh, approach and it also makes you uh, less dependent on the tool fourthly we want to shift left um, fifth point was to uh, uh, think about uh, uh, try to reach immutability and that was quite important for us because uh, giving the context of a bank um, we don't want uh, uh, everybody with admin accounts in, in production assets. We want to protect them. And uh, so we rather want to remove those and make the states in, in production immutable, uh, uh, getting rid of a lot of compliance work, uh, then, then trying to find more efficient ways on how to handle MPAs. And fifthly, uh, which I already briefly or sixthly, which I already briefly explained was we want outcomes over impositions. So uh, a, a great example is that um, in our uh, rules and regulations within the bank, uh, you need to have uh, four eyes looking at a change. So kind of a peer review of an engineer. And the uh, uh, the imposition is to protect certain branches to say to an engineer, hey, uh, your master branch or your main branch should always be protected and you can only do a pull request to that branch using uh, uh, a four eyes principle. That's the imposition. The outcome that you actually want to have is that any code going to production has been reviewed and that you don't care about a specific branch. And that's the, the the direction that we want to head to. Um, given these principles, uh, uh, yeah, basically helped us to define what's next. And what was next is that we decided to go for a public cloud solution. Um, in this case, we selected Azure DevOps uh, as the solution. And the key reasons for that were OK, uh, we want a fully traceable uh, pipeline. So we can head here to the to the SOX compliancy, which is regulations for banks. Um, and help our engineers focusing on coding instead of providing uh, evidence that they've done their coding right. Um, also, if you look at technology, so I have believe that we were front runners in CI CD. Uh, however, I don't think we've done a, uh, uh, I think we've done a great job in that aspect, but you just see that also the uh, cloud providers are offering CI CD tooling. And we've basically been overtaken. And um, so if you look at our department, we have 130 engineers for IT for IT services. Um, which also contains like uh, 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 incident uh, 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 or journeys that support incident management. Um, in essence, there are about 50, 60 engineers working on the pipeline itself. And uh, like Microsoft is developing with a thousand engineers, we'll never be able to keep up with them. And if they provide a commodity that we consume, we should just consume the commodity and focus on what differentiates us. And that's the differentiation in our context. And thirdly, uh, um, key to the choice was, hey, um, if we also want to support uh, our engineers in Australia or Americas, we need to make sure that the offer, the journey that we offer has a local performance. And uh, uh, with going to Azure DevOps, uh, it allows us to leverage the uh, Microsoft data centers. So we use four data centers globally uh, 
to cover basically the footprint of our business, uh, which follows is followed by our engineers, and then they can just yeah work like it's a local uh, uh, a system running in their own local data center. So those were the key reasons. Uh, there were some more. Uh, we use AD. It's integrated with AD, so that helps with the access management, and, and some minor ones additional. But those were the key key drivers to decide going for a uh, uh, a cloud solution. So where are we today with our journey to get fully onboarded to this uh, 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 pipeline in the cloud? So we started, um, we got a decision ratified uh, back in 2018 in December, and then we started to do the work. And we started in April 2019 with the first wave of customers to see if it works, to see if, if an engineer can really make the steps. Can he onboard? Can he do his coding? Can he make his build? Can he uh, 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 test? Can he release? Um, so that was our wave zero. Then from September uh, 2019 till mid 2020, we started to have three waves while ramping up the numbers every wave. And basically since June 1st uh, this year, uh, everybody is allowed to onboard and uh, uh, globally. And that, and you also really see that. So we're currently, current state is about 2000 teams have been onboarded. Um, we have five global instances with one configuration in four data centers. Um, we have 7,000 engineers already making use of the pipeline. So I still uh, need an additional 3,000, but we're getting there. We reduced our cost. Um, we automated our risk controls um, because what we have done in our pipeline is that we say, hey, uh, we need to uh, retrieve all the actions that the engineers have done or the relevant actions that the engineers have done uh, and store it in an evidence store and report on that. So we can prove to our uh, uh, second, third line external auditor that we are in control of our change management process. And uh, uh, we're well collaborating also with our external auditor and they, they already started to drop the term, oh, now you're doing that. We can do continuous uh, auditing. So let's see how that works. But uh, um, we do have the information on what's happening in our, uh, 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 in our bank. Um, yeah, we have the ability to deploy uh, on-prem and in the cloud, uh, both uh, stateful, stateless. Um, and we've also created our service as a platform. So engineers can contribute to our platform. So uh, a good example is a, uh, 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 we have integrations, for example, with our uh, uh, container uh, uh, platform, which we host on on-prem, um, which means there's a direct connection between the pipeline and the platform and doesn't allow any human interaction anymore or we have uh, contributions from our front end teams that add, that basically provide a, uh, a developer toolkit for our front end teams uh, that is embedded in our pipeline. And I hope uh, uh, to further elaborate this platform thinking during our journey, um, because then we are not with a 130 uh, people department, but we are, are with an amazing uh, 10,000 engineering force globally that can contribute and can share, um, which really makes our journey faster. Um, reflecting a little bit on that journey, so we uh, are still on the way. Um, yeah, what could have we done better? Um, so we had a, a last minute design switch, uh, which basically consumed about, I think, two months of productivity. Um, so in the specific 
tool we selected, you can make a choice between either using a single team project or a multiple team project. We had to switch. So pick this carefully. Um, in the first wave, in our wave zero, I thought, ah, 20 teams, that's not that much, so we can handle those. And uh, our CEO also asked me that time, hey, uh, uh, Job, what did they do? How did they bribe you uh, to get on board? Um, but we saw a lot of excitement, so we invited those teams, those 20 teams. Uh, but the, the risk you take there is that, in essence, you don't need 20 teams to prove the solution works. So try, try still to minimize it to only a few teams with the main technologies. And in the case of ING, um, like I said with the, the pipelines we had before, they're evident. So it means that have a team with the .NET application, have a Java, Java application, and have an appli vendor application. Three teams. And they can prove the journey. They can prove if they can uh, uh, code, if they can build, if they, and, and release. So you don't need that much. And uh, it's sometimes very hard to say, hey, uh, please hold off, I, uh, because engineers are always eager to uh, uh, work with new technologies and new concepts. But in, especially in the beginning, it's important to do so. Um, because otherwise they only get disappointed or they have to wait longer. Um, thirdly, uh, what's a kind of critical path item in our journey is, is networks and data centers. Um, so we have, uh, uh, we made some consolidations in the past with regards to our data centers, but we still have many. Let's say we have 10 to 15 key data centers across the globe. And they are not governed uh, all under the same organization. And it's it's really hard to, to create then the connectivity to ensure that your pipeline can uh, deploy to its target. Um, and it's, it's uh, 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 yeah. If you if you cannot achieve that, then yeah, that's nice that you have your uh, 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 in the cloud uh, journey, but if you cannot deploy to the targets, it has no value. And uh, especially in the beginning, and we've we've solved that. But in the beginning, you saw that teams still had to do uh, two weeks of waiting times before they can finally uh, enter a certain data center, which is waste in your engineering journey, which you don't want. Um, fourthly, it's in a large corporate like ING, we have many uh, uh, teams of teams, so-called platform teams. And uh, we did identify them in the beginning, but I think it's uh, we could have done a better job in engaging them how they would use our service. And it's good to have them involved uh, as, as soon as possible. Uh, because with those platform teams, uh, uh, you really create an ecosystem. And uh, uh, you want that ecosystem to be created within your architectural guidelines. So those are things which I think we, we could have done better. And they can be learnings to anybody else that undertakes a journey like we did within ING. Um, I think what we did well is that uh, when you notice, uh, when you announce that you're going to the cloud, um, there's a natural tendency within a, a corporate environment to say, ah, cloud, that's dangerous. That's someone else's data center. Um, so what we did, we involved uh, a risk from day one. Uh, we soon had also involved our audit uh, internal audit team auditing the pipeline auditing the service our external auditor engage with the um, uh, the regulators and that's really key to be uh, to be successful um, what we uh, also did is that we split the existing 
on-premise pipeline and the team that's maintaining that from the new pipeline. And that really helped to get focus. And I think it's one of the key reasons why we could make so much, so much progress because engineers could just focus on, first of all, understanding how this new engineering journey would work, understanding the tools that below it, um, and also think about new concepts, uh, how things you've done over the past 10 years for a certain manner, how you can alter that and how you could adopt it with these new possibilities. And then you're no longer hampered with, hey, but we always did it that way. No, you want a new fresh spirit on, on a new journey. So we basically, or yeah, we really split uh, existing and new. Um, although stated in my learnings that we maybe were a little bit too fast with the first teams, um, we still did, uh, 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 we still learned to, to walk before we, we really uh, spin off. So if you look at the, the onboarding figures uh, throughout 2019, you saw that by the end of 2019, we had about uh, 600, 700 engineers being onboarded. And now in 2020, we see uh, every quarter, we see uh, 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 we double the figures. So end of Q1, 1500 users, end of Q2, 3,000 users, end of Q3, 6,000 users. And probably end of this year, I hope to reach 10,000 or close with, um, which is approximately the amount of engineers within ING. And that growth is, uh, is important, but it's also important that we kept a sustainable pace. So, um, because with additional uh, uh, teams being onboarded, you also can expect additional services being on demand. And there are the, the bottom three reasons why that went well, why we could scale that fast. Um, so first of all, we have uh, uh, self-service access management. So if you look at ING, we, are, we have a hierarchical organization and we have a functional organization. And the functional organization is basically people that work together, whether that's a construct according to a tribe, a guild, a chapter, a circle, a whatever, whether that's cross-border, that should not matter. You just want to make sure that teams can easily form themselves and request uh, all the, the necessary resources required as fast as possible and they can start working with it. So uh, uh, the, the management that we have arranged is self-service, allowing teams to, to determine themselves who can join and who cannot join uh, in a fast manner. And that's also automatically reflected in, in the pipeline. Uh, fifthly, um, we have also self-service uh, for uh, resource management as code. So, uh, it started off with a, a kind of an impediment because when we uh, um, uh, had our reviews with our risks and compliance and, and all the parties, we found out that we could not offer uh, the ability uh, via the UI to uh, uh, create a new repo. Um, so, and it was also not an option with 10,000 engineers to say, well, if you want a new repo, please uh, hand in a service ticket, wait three days, and then you might get a new repo. So what we basically did to, to still be compliant while still making sure that engineers can be fast is that they can uh, do their request in the pipeline itself as code, and then they, uh, within an instant, they get their resources. And for repos that was born out of a need, but we're also doing that to other resources, um, which are not born out of need, but just make life easier. Uh, uh, so you can also ask your cloud service now via the, the pipeline, um, which just makes the life easier because then the, the pipeline itself knows the target environment. And then the pipeline itself can also connect to the target environment. 
and identify the identities of both parties. Sixth, um, we did pretty well in, in getting an industrialized onboarding uh, service. So um, uh, for us, with a global rollout, it was actually a COVID was kind of helpful um, because it allows us to do everything online. And normally we would fly out three days and I do of course miss that interaction, but from an efficiency perspective, you can also do just training online. Um, so that starts with, with good documentation, good training. And also we uh, leverage a lot of uh, many to many channels. So we have a uh, internal stack overflow uh, instance allowing you to communicate broadly to your engineers if you have a new solution. And there you also start to build communities. So before it ends up at my first line, uh, which we do have, it goes already to a number of cycles. Um, and uh, for example, we've also uh, provided example implementation of uh, in the pipeline itself. Hey, how do you do your Scala? your NPM, your .NET, your Java uh, application, and just give the real life examples. So there are a lot of services offered to engineers that help them to find a way before it ends up at my first line and before it ends up at my second line. So my second line can keep on developing new features which should make the engineers more faster. Um, so we are, uh, to summarize, we're well on the way. Um, I'm, uh, uh, personally really enjoying this, uh, just journey. Uh, and we, we basically hope to, uh, uh, have everybody on board at, uh, mid 2021. And, and we, we are convinced that we get there. So I think there's now time for, uh, for questions. Yeah, hi. So um, one of the, the concerns or uh, things that can uh, can cross your mind when you think of a bank and uh, cloud is is that privacy thing. So especially when you talk about source code and everything else that relates to your applications and the, uh, the delivery of them. Um, how did ING perceive this, uh, this um, uh, migration to the cloud for this? Well, uh, consider sensitive uh, portion of uh, of intellectual property. Um, well, we uh, of course assess this. Um, there are a number of of mitigations. So, for example, you can still ha we have our own organization uh, within uh, Azure DevOps. Um, the reason that we also selected uh, uh, multiple Microsoft data centers helps. So you can do a little bit legal partitioning of, hey, I want to have uh, US data in a US data center, AU data in a AU data center, etc. And uh, uh, we just work together also with Microsoft on 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 the guarantees and and the assurances that they provided. Okay, so uh, the this example of uh, moving to to the cloud for for this type of service, you think it should be followed by by all other organizations, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> now, I I think is um, in the end the the solution. So we picked the cloud because of our context. So in the end, it's just a a a tool. And, and you can have debates about tools, uh, uh, whether plus or minus, I, I don't. Yeah. Um, key is if it fits the purpose. And in our case, it fits the purpose because we want to have uh, an integrated suite and not uh, a best of breed. Fair enough. Uh, and okay, how, well, what did you find most exciting about, uh, about this journey? For, for yourself about um, this, uh, in a bank, in the context uh, of a bank, because I'm sure there are some uh, specific details around here. Uh, the, the global scale? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I find the, the global scale uh, uh, very exciting and, and not so much that, um, so 
typically we would start small in the, in uh, Amsterdam and we would go to the countries. Uh, what we have now invented in Amsterdam is so great you need to consume it. And now we could, by using the cloud, we could leverage countries and join them much quicker, much sooner without any restrictions. And, and I'm also really looking forward to further extend the platform uh, thinking in the pipeline. That's really exciting. You know. Yeah. So uh, with, with this journey, I'm sure that the cloud is really, really near in terms of infrastructure as well, not just services uh, that we consume over there for uh, for uh, the development experience and the whole uh, whole journey. How uh, how do you think that looks for for ING? Is is it a step forward forward the the fact that that we do have this in in the cloud opening yeah, up? Yeah, uh, definitely. So um, uh, so a little bit technically, but Azure DevOps allows you to either use everything as code or uh, drill through the classic UI. And we're moving uh, all our engineers to everything as code and 80, more than 80% are already doing that. And uh, yeah, the the example that we also have integrated uh, a cloud provider as code, that's really helpful. So uh, I, I hope that we can follow also to our, our infra targets this example. Cool. Uh, we have uh, have uh, some questions from from the audience as well. So, do you have any plans for the future? Plans for new ways to continue improving? How how this uh, how will this evolve? I mean, the, the next steps after onboarding and after the the usage of the existing uh, um, layout. Um, I think we can further uh, um, enhancing testing capabilities. Uh, in the in the uh, in the experience, um, even uh, with with concepts like uh, 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 infra as code, uh, making uh, 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 stateless uh, uh, apps, uh, I uh, uh, hope to further reduce the the waste in the engineering journey. So there are those areas of think, hey, where I can, where are still the 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 big value? Where you can really make an impact, I think those are the key ones. Okay, uh, so this is uh, the the next question is a bit of a of a remix of uh, what I uh, asked you before. Um, how um, how this migration to the cloud for the uh, the um, uh, the CI/CD tools? Uh, how did it affect the, the mindset and uh, the view on security in uh, in each of the, or not each, but a general feeling maybe uh, for the teams that were already onboarded? You see them, you saw them scared. Do you, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a little bit, and I can understand that. So it feels some, some teams feel a little bit insecure. Um, so we are also for secrets, we use it as your key fault. And they feel, hey, but then my secrets are in the cloud. Yeah, it is, exactly. but it is a step you have to take. And uh, uh, it's more explaining uh, how we mitigate that, uh, how we ensure you're still protected um, to get them across the line. So they, they do feel a little bit ooh, worried sometimes, but we can convince them. Okay, so this uh, has been a success so far. Yes. There were no blockers from, from this point of view uh, until now. I There's al always work to do, uh, but uh, <laughs> so far so good. And uh, uh, yeah, I personally really enjoy it. Okay. Uh, yeah, another good question. Uh, do you see an only cloud, uh, the a cloud only services or infrastructure in the future? Or uh, do you think uh, the hybrid will uh, will still exist? For I quite think some for time? for um, for us, I think we will go uh, uh, for. A, it's my personal view, but yeah. uh, for a hybrid solution because there are uh, a number of items which we will never put in the cloud uh, uh, from a bank perspective, and that's okay. Uh, of course, no worry. Okay, nice. Just browsing a bit to see if we have any any other questions. Uh, yeah, so uh, we kind of answered those. Cool.
I don't think we we have some uh, something else. Uh, you have to hurry a bit if you want to uh, to catch uh, Job uh, for for future questions. So uh, the time is running up. <laughs> Uh, from uh, from my point of view, as being a, a consumer of uh, of this service, uh, this has been uh, a wonderful journey uh, with some hiccups. You uh, you described Gosh. them uh, pretty pretty well over there, so I'm not gonna gonna get into those. Uh, a public apology, I may apologize maybe because uh, we uh, we were probably one of those teams that pushed into being in in the first wave. So maybe, it's, uh... it's good. It's good. <laughs> the the thing is that um, front runners and teams they can be kind of uh, annoying. Like ah, oh, they they bang. Oh, we want this flow job. Oh, we want that or that. But they are also visionaries to help you guide for what's coming in the next three to five years. So you need to embrace them because the 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 mindset is mostly in the in the right. <laughs> place so it's it's only helpful okay <laughs> i'll take that as an apology accepted <laughs> absolutely absolutely no no apology needed okay that's a that's a good thing to know um uh, cool so um thank you so much for for sharing this journey uh with uh with us uh it's really exciting it's really exciting globally i guess uh, we we feel it in in Romania right now because we're in the merge of um, of migrating to to the solution and unifying the the experience of every uh, developer regarding of uh, tech stack or preferences or whatnot. So this will be a huge huge help. All of us being in the same place, being able to uh, interact with uh, with with each other and everything else. We were blocked by by tools. Uh, in in a lot of ways, so this opens up a lot of opportunities for collaboration, for uh, reviews, for uh, sharing practices, especially in, in the DevOps area. So uh, uh, a big plus from from uh, from uh, from us for uh, for doing this. Thank you. Yeah, thank me. Uh, thank you for having me here. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll uh, we'll see you guys uh, in uh, in a couple of minutes at uh, two o'clock in the next session. Until then, see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.